Okay, so we're gonna install our glass. Um, first thing is you wanna use either cardboard or some kind of spacer to sit the glass on. One thing about the 3 8 inch glass is that if you hit it with tile, you can crack it, you can chip it. It's really easy to break. So you wanna make sure you have some pads. This is just some extra curdy board from actually doing the shower. So this is gonna make sure that when I set my glass down when I'm trying to get this in place, that I have a nice soft thing to put it on. So put these on the floor before we get started. And what I'm gonna do is just dry fit my glass first, make sure it fits. So like I was saying, if you hit the side of this glass, I mean, you could pretty much put a hammer and hit the side of this and it's not gonna break. But you hit the corners of this glass, really easy to, to shatter. So you have to be really careful when you're moving this glass that you don't hit the edges. Okay, so these, or spacers and this is gonna I'm gonna put this down inside the U channel the space above the glass now if everything's level you can just use one on each part but this is gonna soften uh, you putting the glass into that channel so I'm gonna use two on this outside part because I know my floor is a little bit unlevel uh, my high sides in the corner over there so I'm gonna double stack two on this one and I just have a single one in the back. So let's just go ahead and place this in here. Before we continue, I wanted to show you a course that I have outlined on teachable.com. This is going to go into a lot more detail than I can go here in on YouTube. And one of the things I want to make sure that you know that is I have templates that you can download and fill in your measurements to give to your glass supplier to order glass. It's really important to have clear communication with your glass company when ordering glass like this. So if you're serious about installing a glass enclosure, check out the link in the description below. I have a whole bunch of additional information on this course that I think will really help you out. Thanks. Like I said, these little spacers help out, um, especially if you have an unlevel floor. I'm not really that far out. I'm only about a quarter inch from one side of the shower to the other. So I'm gonna stick these in here. And then what I, you need is a corner clamp. This is gonna help you slide the glass into each side of this, and this is gonna hold that glass together. All right, so one place you wanna note is where the top of your glass is. So this is where I wanna have my U-channel on the wall going up to. So I'm just gonna put a little mark at the top of my glass. So then I'll bring, I'll measure down for my U-channel on this. These are the hinges and they come with the, the regular screws already in them. I don't particularly like using these because they can strip out and they're, they're harder to use. So they do come with an Allen wrench um, and new screws for it. So I always replace them with that. So I take these ones out. Okay, so then in this package, they've got two different types of rubber gaskets. So the thicker ones are for the 3 8 inch glass and the real thin ones are for half inch glass. I ordered 3 8 inch glass, so I'm gonna use the thicker rubber spacers here, here, and then you just put your gasket on the inside. So we're gonna put this door handle on. I just find it easier to have the handle on there so when you're putting it in place and stuff, you can grab onto something. So this says basically a bunch of washers, plastic washers on either side. So you just need to put them all together. Okay, so what I'm just looking for here is just how high this is from my fixed panel to my door. So I'm about a quarter inch off. 
And, it, and this is also needs to be moved out. So I'm just gonna have to make sure that I know that I have to basically put another shim underneath this part of the door so that this meets, meets nice and even. So this is just dry fitting, it just helps you know, because as you can even see here, when I have the door straight against the wall, you know, this panel needs to move that way. So I need to shim this up to be able to make that, that whole panel kind of move out a little bit. So what I'm needing is another shim under here. And we'll just double check this again. And that's not bad. So I can, what we'll do is we'll install the fixed panels first and then we can just bring this door up a little bit to be able to meet that. So basically I have three shims underneath this portion of the door, two here and then one at the end. And that's all because of, you know, the, the, the small amount of unlevelness that my shower pan is. So if you can get this to dry fit and you're pretty close, then you'll be able to make this adjustment. You could pretty much adjust these hinges about an eighth of an inch to move it up or down. So you do have some ability to make this gap nice and even too. This your channel, you gotta drill a couple holes in for your screws. I'll probably put something like three. Okay, so we're just gonna use a, bit, a little bit of silicone in these holes. Okay, so once you have your glass tested, you wanna fill this whole channel with silicone. So I just use the inexpensive stuff for this. This is 100%, you just wanna make sure it says 100% silicone. Um, but for the channel where you're really not gonna see any of the um, actual silicone, I just use the cheaper stuff for this. Now some of this is gonna ooze out of this channel and that's good. You just wanna make sure that it's well sealed. So I usually recommend just filling that up, let it ooze out and then you can clean up the silicone afterwards, but you just really wanna make sure that this is well sealed in this U-channel because this is what's really gonna keep the water from getting seeping outside of the shower door area. Okay, so before you put the side panel on, I would just use some acetone to clean up this glass because once you butt this together, you're not gonna be able to really clean in the corner. So acetone really helps get any silicone off or anything tough to get off of. I wanna make sure you clean the side of the glass. It's gonna butt there too. You wanna fill up this U-channel as well. Fill that whole cavity up, let it ooze out if it, if it has to. to do is just use a piece of this new channel so this is I mean probably a sixteenth above so I'm fine with that I'm gonna be able to adjust my hinges to adjust to make that level but what I want to do is just put this u-channel on here so I can keep the door everything flush with one another 
and then you just want to pay attention to where this door is meeting. need to be drilled oh. all right so a quick tip on the screws these stainless steel screws that come with the hardware for your mounting brackets, I would, I would recommend using some galvanized screws to start the screw first, or you know the screw into the wood, because these can be brittle, and if they snap off, holy cow, what a mess. So I would definitely recommend pre-screwing it with your galvanized screws before using the stuff that comes with the hardware. So I'm just gonna go in here and make sure that everything's clear and then I'm gonna be able to drill right into the wood. Then take some silicone and just fill all these holes before you put the screws in. And then the other thing with these screws, you wanna put a lot of pressure on your drill. If these things strip out, you're not going to be able to twist them out. So, and I always use an impact driver. Impact drivers are a little bit more stable, but again, just, just put pressure on your drill, make sure these things don't spin. You can use a, a crowbar, but you want to put something underneath of this. And this is only if you need to lift it. Okay, so to adjust the door, you're gonna get a little bit of, you'll have a little bit of room to wiggle this around. So, you know, you just loosen up the hinges and then try to get everything even. Typically, I usually leave a gap here between about a quarter inch. And if it is a problem, most of the time it's not. Most of the time this little gap isn't a problem for water getting out. But you can always add uh, a bulb seal on this joint if it became an issue. Um, but you really wanna to try to keep this about an eighth inch gap, just because the expansion contraction of the warm air, um, you know, being from cold to hot, you don't want this to be too tight or you'll end up having glass kind of touching each other at different times of the year. So try to leave at least an eighth. We have about a quarter here. Um, so depending on whether the client wants that seal or not, we might put a transition on there. But you just move this around a little bit you know, we're pretty even on the top, so I'm happy with that. And then we'll just use the Allen key, tighten up these hinges so then it doesn't move anymore. So for the edges against my U channel and the actual nice part where the glass meets glass, you really want to use a higher quality silicone so what i really like to use is this crl it's made cr lawrence and it's water clear silicone sealant this stuff is really really clear and will last a very long time it's very expensive i mean i think it's 60 to 70 dollars a tube so you don't want to use this to fill in your u channel that's why i was using the cheaper stuff there but this stuff is really great for sealing against your u channel and where the glass meets glass so always cut your tip just, just always start out small, I should say. So that's about a, a 3 16 inch gap there. So we'll just uh, go right down the edge of our U-channel. And it's really super clear stuff. So it's, it's pretty impressive stuff. So it's worth the extra money for doing this type of install. And I'll just finger that out. Okay, then tomorrow I'm gonna to cut out some of this excess silicone and reseal that um, because it's oozing out. And if you try to take it out now, it's just gonna smear against the glass and it's a big mess to clean. 
So it's better if you wait 24 hours once it's completely dry. But we're gonna go ahead and do our corner so that this corner is nice and set. So just clean that off. And then just try to be as consistent as possible. Okay, so then you want to just keep this clamp on here overnight and then once everything sets, you'll be in good shape. Alright. Okay, so next day you can just take your utility knife and cut out this excess silicone. Like I said, you want to do this the next day because then it can be nice and clean when you cut it out. Otherwise, you're just going to smear it. So I just cut out this little bit of silicone here. And then you can take your high quality silicone and just go right over top here just to make sure that this glass is sealed. <laughs> 